CNN White House correspondent visits his alma mater and leaves a mark on current students. Then, a fellow Duke gives Wheel of Fortune a spin. And Breeze TV's Ellie White takes us to a place where we belong. Right now on Breeze TV. Live from the Allison B. Parker studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Good morning, JMU, and happy Friday. I'm Matt Wyrick. And I'm Olivia Gerald. Thanks for joining us this morning on Breeze TV. We begin today's show with a famous JMU alum who took a trip down memory lane and talked to students about his journey from Wilson Hall to the White House. CNN's chief White House correspondent Jim Acosta visited JMU yesterday and answered questions about his Duke dog days and his career in media and politics. Breeze TV reporter Madison Haynes gives us an exclusive look inside the student Q&A. Before being told to get out by President Trump, Jim Acosta was just a normal Duke dog. He walked across the quad, studied in Carrier, and even did a few keg stands. You stand, you hold the keg like this. No, <laughs> your buddy holds your legs up. No. Do they still do that? As a student, Acosta ran for SGA president and lost. What I found interesting were some of his um, platforms, condom machines and dorms. Oh, no. <laughs> now, Acosta has stepped off of the quad and into D.C., while visiting JMU, he spoke about his views on the role of journalists. It's up to r reporters and journalists to stand up for what we do, you know, and, and be like, hey, it's the First Amendment, man. He talked to students about the fake news movement and how he feels the public views today's media. When the President of the United States refers to members of the press as the enemy of the people, the only outcome of that is to have millions and millions of people lose some faith in the press and lose faith in journalists. Journalists are not part of the resistance, but if journalists are attacked, we should resist. Acosta looks back at his time as a Duke and is appreciative. He believes the university prepared him for his current role in the media. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg, I'm Madison Haynes. They say April flowers bring May flowers, but what if it's snow showers? Many parts of the country are still experiencing heavy snowfall, New York saw its eighth most snowy day of 2018 as five inches fell in Central Park in the morning. The Big Apple usually only gets about half an inch of snow for the entire month. Meanwhile, in Harrisonburg, we're still expecting up to three inches of snow on Saturday. A 5.3 magnitude earthquake is shaking things up in the California Channel Islands. The Templar started just before 12.30 p.m. on Thursday. The quake was centered south of Santa Cruz Island. This is the largest quake in Southern California since the 5.1 magnitude quake in 2014. The tremble was felt in parts of the mainland, including cities like Santa Barbara and Oxnard. Law enforcement states that there are no reports of significant damages or injuries. No tsunami alerts were issued as of yet. In other news, patients who have had a surgery at a hospital in Denver, Colorado in the last couple of years may have been exposed to HIV. The Colorado Department of Health states that Porter Adventist Hospital did not properly sterilize its surgical equipment. Patients who received orthopedic or spinal surgery July 21, 2016 to February 20th of this year are at risk of infection and exposure to HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. Hospital officials are contacting patients who might have been exposed to these viruses. However, there are no reports of infection. The hospital revised its sterilization process and was greenlit by regulators on March 28th. YouTube's headquarters was the target of a deadly shooting by a disgruntled YouTuber who believed she was losing viewers due to recent policy changes. There are at least three wounded and there was one fatality. The deceased is the suspected shooter. The suspect was identified as female YouTuber Nassim Agdam. Her channel had more than 10,000 sub subscribers. She criticized YouTube's treatment of her online. On her personal website, she claimed that YouTube cut her income and put age restrictions on her videos. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube, and I'm not the only one. Her family reported Agdam missing when she didn't answer her phone for two days. They also say she had no personal connection with the employees of YouTube. There are over 17,000 employees who work for the company. 
According to multiple reports, Ogdam's father warned local law enforcement about his daughter prior to the attack, but no action was taken. Police do believe the shooter worked alone. Gas prices are rising and there's no sign of them lowering anytime soon. Breeze TV senior reporter Caitlin Merriman has more about what to expect of prices in the future. Gas prices have been rising this year sooner than ever, raising nine cents each week. Before you pick up the pump to fill your gas tank, you might want to consider just how much one gallon will cost you. And as we have traveled on east, the price has just risen extraordinarily high. Contrary to popular belief, the increase on gas prices doesn't start locally. We'd have no control over the price increase. College students are also trying alternatives for getting around and cut back cost. I usually take the bus to get to campus um, and me and my friends, we carpool a lot too. Some are even finding ways to check for prices in relative areas before they even arrive. I've got a gas app and we look for the cheapest prices that we can get and sometimes we don't get that cheap price because it's like, I need gas now. But according to AAA, this jump in gas prices is just the beginning for the season. Reporting for Breeze TV in Harrisonburg, I'm Caitlin Merriman. A tiny robot has brought a new medical teaching experience to JMU's School of Nursing. Breeze TV's Anna Saunders shows us the new learning tool making an impact on nursing education. Supertory is the latest technology in newborn simulation and now JMU Nursing's latest addition to their training labs. Compared to the standard doll the nursing school used before her arrival in January, Super Tory has the lifelike features to take neonatal training to the next level. Well, everybody loves the movement. Like, that's one of the first things. Um, her crying, she does make some very realistic baby type faces as she cries. Super Tory's other features include changes in breathing patterns, heartbeat, and color, giving students different scenarios to assess. RF module shows connection. And then I have um, operation or controls on the left-hand side of the software. With over 7,000 square feet of skill labs in the department, nursing students are given the opportunity to learn and make mistakes in a safe environment. Anything could potentially happen in there, and they make you think on your feet a little bit more, which I really like and I think is really helpful in the end. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Anna Saunders. Civil rights icon Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated 50 years ago, but the country still remembers his impact to this day. Martin Luther King Jr. took his last breath in Memphis, Tennessee, half a century ago. The National Civil Rights Museum rang its bell at the time of King's death this past Wednesday. Bells rang 39 times here in Harrisonburg and across the country to mark each year of King's life. In Washington, D.C., a wreath was placed over his memorial near the National Mall. People marched nearby in remembrance. President Trump released a message honoring the late civil rights On icon. On this cherished day, we honor the memory of Reverend King, and we rededicate ourselves to a glorious future where every American from every walk of life can live free from fear, liberated from hatred, and uplifted by boundless love for their fellow citizens. Although the world lost an icon, his legacy and inspiration lives on. With graduation just around the corner, students are wrestling to get themselves ready for the big day. The spring grad fair kicked off just this past week as the one-stop one shop for commencement gave students everything they need to graduate, from caps, gowns, and tassels to graduation announcements. Not only could students cap off their attire, but professional headshots were also provided. I loved how we got to just get the cap and gown, which is honestly emotional, and the tassel, and then obviously I love taking pictures with Duke Dog and all like the sign stuff like that, getting to take a picture for my parents. I had a sign that says, thanks mom and dad, because I appreciate everything they did for me to get me to where I am today. I wouldn't be here without my parents, so shout out to you, mom and dad. With their caps and gowns in hand, students walked away from the fair confident, yet still anxiously awaiting their final days at JMU. After enduring a string of wild weather, Washington, D.C. finally sees its famous cherry blossoms in full bloom. April 5th is the latest the blossoms have peaked since 2015, when the blossoms didn't peak until April 10th. According to the National Park Service, the best viewing of the trees will be for the next four to seven days, but under ideal conditions, they can hold their blossoms for up to two weeks. 
However, the forecast for winter weather this weekend could spell trouble for the longevity of this long-awaited bloom. The Harrisonburg community is tuned into the Hawaiian culture as a JMU professor teaches it how to play the ukulele. Breeze TV's Ellie White tells us more. <laughs> I'm here at the Friendly Fermenter where community members are learning how to play the ukulele and I'm learning a few tricks myself. <laughs> JM Uke is a student-run music group that engages music education students and community members in music learning, performance, and development. JM Uke is a really good opportunity for us to engage with the community and bring music to them. Um, and the ukulele is a really pretty simple instrument to, to master. The group led a jam session where everyone was encouraged to sing and play along to some of their favorite hits. It's, um, it's cool that you can just hang out and jam to songs you know, and even if you don't have that much musical experience. The free public event succeeded all expectations. The Friendly Fermenter quickly transformed into a venue where you can easily enjoy good melodies and smooth picking. This is just the tip of the iceberg to me, but it was also awesome. <laughs> JMU continues to hold various events in hopes of giving people a better sense of how music can be a great outlet in connecting with old friends and making new ones. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Ellie White. Do you know how to play an instrument? No, kind, I mean, like, if you count the recorder from, like, <laughs> elementary school, then kind of. But I think that's so cool. Like, I love it when we can figure out interesting ways to bring the community together. Yeah, and they say the ukulele is one of the easiest instruments to learn. So I guess if you're going to start somewhere, that's Let's the place. Let's go. Yeah, friendly fermenter. <laughs> now Kevin Rom has the latest on the construction of the Union Bank and Trust Center from the sports desk. Welcome to Breeze TV Sports Wrap. I'm Kevin Rahm. Since 1982, the Convocation Center has been the place to catch both JMU basketball programs in action. But in just two years from now, there will be a new home for the Dukes. And it's an $88 million home to be exact. The Union Bank and Trust Center is expected to be completed by the start of the 2020 basketball seasons. And the athletic department is looking forward to ushering in a new era for JMU hoops. We are extremely excited about the Union Bank and Trust Center and what it means for the community, what it means for JMU and obviously for us, what it means for our basketball programs and our student athletes and our fans. Um, it's gonna be a phenomenal facility. One of the things that we ran into through the process was everybody had a nice arena. There were a lot of nice arenas being built, but in addition to arenas, there were practice facilities. And today, you've got to have an independent practice facility in order to get the work in that you need to be successful. The arena will also include a player lounge and a film room. The Union Bank and Trust Center will be located across Carrier Drive from E-Hall, and construction is set to begin on April 27th. JMU Baseball has won just two of its first six conference games so far this season. Wednesday, the Dukes took a break from Colonial Athletic Association op opponents and instead faced an in-state foe in VMI. And this one came down to the wire. We'll pick it up in the bottom of the ninth. True freshman Anthony Piccolini at the plate. He lines one over the shortstop's head, and there's going to be a play at the plate for the winning run. But it's not in time. Another true freshman, Josh Jones, slides in safely, and the Dukes walk off at Veterans Memorial Park. They get the win, 4-3. to three. Skipping now to the majors and the home opener for the Washington Nationals taking on the Mets. Bottom three, and Anthony Rendon lines one down the left field line. Yanis Cespedes picks it up, and here's another play at the plate, but this time, another one not in time. The cutoff man misses the throw, and Adam Eaton tumbles home to give the Nats the 2-1 to one lead. Strasburg on the mound for the Nats, and he would struggle. Cespedes tattoos this one to left center to tie things up in the top of the fourth. And in the next inning, Michael Conforto, he goes opposite field. That would be it for uh, Strasburg, Strasburg on the day. He gave up four runs in just a shade under five innings pitched. And that would do it for him. But that would not stop the bleeding as Jay Bruce with the bases loaded. He sends that one over the right field wall. That is his first homer of the season. The Mets spoil the Nats home opener eight to two. This weekend marks the 82nd playing of the Masters Tournament at Augusta National Golf Club. It's the first major tournament of the PGA Tour season, and it's by far the most anticipated tournament year after year. 
and rightfully, rightfully so, the biggest stage golf has to offer is also the most beautiful. But all eyes are fixed on the return of one of the game's all-time greats. Tiger Woods is back in a major for the first time in two years, and the gallery has given him a warm welcome. The people are, are incredible. They've, they've, been, they've been awesome uh, this entire comeback. I got a standing ovation on the range um, coming up to the first tee. The people coming out when I was coming out of the clubhouse to the putting green, I mean, they're really into it. Um, but as I said, I was kept reminding myself just a low peeler out there. Uh, you know, I, I, now it's time for me to do my job, and my job is put the ball in the fairway and move on from there. His long game was a little inconsistent at times yesterday, but he would, but the flat stick would help him stay on track as Woods sinks the putt there. He would birdie that one, and he would also have another chance to birdie 17, but this one would fall just short. He would tap it in for a par. He shoots uh, one over 73 on the day. Now to the other players participating in the Masters Tournament. A lot of notables all among that leaderboard today, especially there are gonna be a lot of players moving up and down that leaderboard as they try to make the cut going into the weekend. But for one, the defending champ, Sergio Garcia, he got his first career major win last year when he took home the green jacket. This year, he would certainly struggle. Fred Couples right here, he makes it look easy, but this isn't his first time at Augusta National. He drains the bunker shot. He finished even par on the day, and here's Sergio. Like I said, took on the green jacket last year, but on the 15th, it would give him some serious trouble. What appeared to be a nice shot didn't end up so well as that one trickles all the way down to the water. He can't even believe it. Now he will take another drop and try again. This is actually his third attempt, and he doesn't like this one either. Another one, it hits the green, but those Augusta National greens are so tricky. Another one falls into the water. He would eventually be able to uh, make a 13, which is eight over par on the hole. Tough day for Sergio. Not a tough day for Jordan Spieth. He is also a past Masters champion. He won in 2015. He had the putter working. He also had the iron game going here on the 16th par three. Gets it very close within a few feet, and he would just tap it in for his birdie. He birdied six of his last seven, bogeying the 18th and finishing atop the leaderboard at six under par. The family of a missing teen is desperately searching for any signs of him. Jevin Lemke was pulled under a rip current in the Gulf of Mexico on March 25th, and his status is currently unknown. There's dim prospects that her son is still alive, but Lemke's mother remains hopeful. I just need to find him, whatever way we can, whatever state we can. I just need to find Jevin. A GoFundMe campaign for the family has raised more than $14,000, and the teen's father held a memorial service for his son in Fort Morgan on Thursday. Class enrollment is here once again, and we've reached out to students to get their opinions on the process. Enrollment week can be a stressful time for students in the wake of other schoolwork. We spoke to freshman Emily McElroy to hear her experience about trying to get into classes. It's nice that we get to pick our own classes, but at the same time, it's like unnecessary stress, especially like when finals are coming up. Even if students didn't get their ideal schedules during their enrollment times, they will have second chances to pick classes with open enrollment beginning today. Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards claims that Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner made her an offer last year that sounded like a bribe. In her new book, Richards wrote that the couple offered an increase in federal funding and exchange Planned Parenthood would agree to stop providing abortions. And of course, what she did say to me in that meeting, and I detail this in the book, was she said, well, you understand my uh, father is pro-life, uh, which I assume she meant he is opposed to abortion. President Trump later signed a bill that allowed states to withhold federal money from groups that provide abortions, including Planned Parenthood. Federal law prohibits taxpayer money from being used to fund abortions. However, Planned Parenthood has claimed that most federal funding goes to women's health services, such as birth control and pregnancy tests. A former movie producer hires a new public relations firm. On Tuesday, Harvey Weinstein parted ways with his former PR firm, Citric & Company, which he brought on in light of his sexual assault allegations last October. He has now hired Judah Engelmeyer as, of Herald PR as his communications director. 
In celebrity news, Channing Tatum and his wife Jenna Dewan are splitting up. After nine years of marriage, the couple announced its separation Monday on Instagram. Their statement claims that they, that they are lovingly going their separate ways and that there were no, no lies or salacious events that led to their split. The couple met in 2006 during the filming of the movie Step Up and now have a four-year-old daughter named Everly. Tatum is currently involved with the upcoming animated film Smallfoot, while Dewan is the host of NBC's World of Dance. If you happen to tune in to Monday's episode of Wheel of Fortune, you might have seen a little extra purple and gold on your screen. Breeze TV, TV reporter Grace James tells us more about the JMU student who landed second place on the show. This past Monday, we watched one of our own win big on Wheel of Fortune. Do you know Palmieri, a junior JMU student and UREC employee, won a trip to Europe and $17,000, but the prizes weren't the only surprise to him. When I did hear back from them, I was shocked. I was in disbelief that they had actually wanted me to come and be on the show. Palmieri's friend and co-worker, Connor Holt, was just as excited as Gino about being on the show. Once I found out that Gino was going to be on Wheel of Fortune, of course I had to tune in. I wore my heart seeing him out there. Although Gino's friends already knew he'd be on the show, keeping it a secret was harder than he thought. We had conversations before it aired. I was like, oh, what'd you get? What'd you win? And he... Uh, I was just saying, you know, I can't say, you know, you have to watch April 2nd. Now that the episode aired, Gino is excited about sharing his experience. It was just an incredible experience being able to see what's on the other side of the camera. I was very blessed to be there. Looking forward to going on the trip. That'll be a lot of fun. And with the cash prize that I received, it's going to go towards my education to help pay for that. Reporting in Harrisonburg for The Breeze TV, I'm Grace James. That's all for today, JMU. Join us next week on Breeze TV.